Hey guys, welcome to another video. If you're new here, I'm Kelly, and today's video has been in the works for over a week. Today, we are here for my review on the brand Auric. Auric is the brand by Samantha Ravendahl. I have been following her since well before my YouTube days. I love Samantha Ravendahl. I really like how she's like not afraid to speak her mind and she'll share her opinions, her reviews. I trust what she says. And when I saw that she was coming out with the brand Auric, I was really, really excited to get my hands on these products. I definitely purchased them right away on launch day. I was super excited to get my hands on them and I knew that I wanted to create a review for you guys. And a lot of the videos that I saw coming out were first impressions. And and it was the first time that people were using these products and in talking to some of my friends and asking them if they were gonna pick anything up or what they were getting I know that I have a few friends even creator friends on the YouTube space who said that they just wanted to see a few more reviews coming out instead of just first impression videos so when I received my products I got them on a Thursday I think and if you're not new here, then you know that I'm a teacher and that I film on the weekends. So I thought, ooh, I can film this weekend with my Auric products. But then I thought about it and I was like, you know what? I really want to give myself an extra week to try these out, to gather my thoughts, and to really give a good review and not a first impression. So that is what I have been doing, and that's why this video is coming up a little bit later. You've probably seen a ton of Auric reviews, a ton of Auric demos, but I still wanted to get my opinion out there. I think my opinion is a little bit different than the other videos that I've been seeing. And so I've really been working hard to kind of come up with my thoughts and share some demos with you. This may be a little bit of a longer video. I'm going to have timestamps in the description box because I have demos. I'm using this several different ways with the Glow Lust product. I'm using it as a primer in one clip. I'm mixing it with foundation in another clip, and then I'm using it as just an illuminizer. I only have one clip using this eyeshadow product because I've only been wearing it one way. So I will have timestamps in the description box down below, but why don't we go ahead and jump into the video. Let me first start by telling you what I picked up and telling you a little bit about my skin and my makeup preferences. Since I didn't do that in the intro, I did pick up the Glow Lust in the shade Selenite, and I also picked up the Smoke and Reflect in the shade Defiance. So the thing with my skin is that I do have very dry skin. My skin is very, very dry, even living in Texas in a humid climate. I have dry skin, and it's hard to tell someone's foundation shade when you're watching them on camera, especially with artificial lighting and such. I am what I would consider light, maybe even light fair, but I'm not like the lightest shade in foundations. So just for a couple examples, you will see me using the Fenty Beauty Pro Filter Hydrating Longwear Foundation in these clips, and I'm in the shade 190. In NARS, I'm typically in the shade Fiji. In the Too Faced Born This Way Foundation, I'm in the shade Vanilla. And in my Armani Luminous Silk Foundation, I'm in the shade 4.5. So I'm usually not the lightest, and I'm not really in the fair category. I'm in the light category, and that's why I went with Selenite. Selenite is the second to lightest shade. Morganite is the lightest shade, and I kind of went back and forth, like, do I get Morganite? Do I get Selenite? I would say that my undertones are typically very neutral, but I prefer more of like warm toned foundations and warm toned looks. So Morganite is a little bit more on the cooler end, and selenite is on the warmer end. So that's why I went with selenite. And then when it comes to the smoke and reflect, I don't really have a ton of products like this. So in the smoke and reflect, I'm sure you've seen these a million times over, but you do have a cream product here. This one is the more bronze toned shade. What is this technically called? Okay, cream and powder. So this is the cream. And then in the lid, you do have, oh, how can I pop this up with my nails? you do have a, an eyeshadow. I think it's t it's called a powder eyeshadow. For me, it feels more like a glitter topper. So those are the products that I picked up. That's a little bit about my skin. Now let's go ahead and get into the demos and then I'm going to end with my review. 
All right, here we go. It's been a while since I've done a voiceover, so hopefully we don't have too many mistakes here because you can't really edit as you're doing a voiceover, not as easily anyway. So in this first clip, I am using my Oryx Selenite as a primer. So I just put one full pump on the back of my hand and then I dotted it onto my face like I would with my foundation and I used my hands to blend it out. Now I did use my Embryolisse Priming Moisturizer underneath this primer, and I did my full skincare routine. So this was truly being used as a primer and not as any type of skincare. It felt hydrating when it went on. I did feel like I had to blend it a little bit. It took some time to really blend it in completely, but it did blend in and it felt very nice on the skin. Now in the clip, it doesn't look super like glowy and Tin Man like, but in person it looked a little bit brighter to the point where I would have been uncomfortable just using it on top of my skincare. Then I went in with foundation and concealer. I actually went in with concealer first, and I did that because I wanted to see what it would look like on no foundation days. And I actually do really like the look that I got from that. I thought that it looked really nice because you could see the glow underneath my concealer. When I go in with foundation, I feel like it takes a little bit of the glow away, so it was much more natural and skin-like when I went in with the concealer. I used the Pat McGrath concealer in the shade L5, and then for foundation, I did go in with my Fenty Pro Filter Hydrating Foundation, and I will talk in the review about how I chose that foundation, but I applied that the way that I normally would. I put it on the back of my hand, used my finger to dot it in, and just blended it out with my beauty blender. That's typically how I apply foundation, so I was keeping everything the same here because I really wanted to see the effect that the selenite would give me on a day-to-day -day basis when I'm using this product in my normal, everyday makeup routine. Okay, I wanted to give you a close up of my skin and my face and what it looked like when I used the Auric Selenite Glow Lust as a primer, but also when I had the rest of my makeup on. So just to let you know what I used for a bronzer, I did use this Ofra Cosmetics bronzer in the shade River. It was in collaboration with Samantha March and it does have a shimmer side and a matte side but I only went into the matte side and then for blush I had a hard time finding a blush that was matte. I do use a lot of satin and glowy products. This is probably the most matte blush that I have and it's by Essence the blush in number 10 befitting and I do not have any highlighter on. So it's just what you saw me apply using the Auric, my Fenty foundation, my Pat McGrath concealer. I did set with powder underneath my eyes and on my forehead and then I went in with blush and bronzer and this is what we have. Now this time I'm going to use my selenite as a highlighter and I did not go in with any highlighter on top of it. Up to this point I have my eyes done, my foundation, concealer, but I don't have any bronzer or blush, no highlighter. I did initially get a little bit too much on my finger so I was trying to blend it out with my finger but I noticed that I took too much product now it did blend in nicely, but I found when I used it as a primer, it took some time to blend into the skin and it did take some time to blend in when I was putting it on top of my foundation as well. So that's why I chose to go in with my beauty blender after just to make sure that it really melted in the skin and didn't sit on top of it. I did not have any problems with it moving my foundation. I felt like it blended in nicely. It didn't sit weird on top of it. And I feel like if you do like a subtle highlight, it does give you a little bit of a glow. It just doesn't give you quite the glow that a highlighter like Natasha Denona or Ofra would give you. It is much more subtle and much more natural looking. I also was watching Alive, so you can see me looking down in the corner. I think I was watching Makeup Magpies with Stephen Ford, Nadia, and Rupi Minhas, um, Nadia and Betsy Gocher. I'm pretty sure that's what I was watching. Anyway, I felt like it applied nicely with a beauty blender. 
I'm not typically a huge fan of liquid anything. You would think having dry skin that I would be, but I don't typically apply a liquid highlight and I think I still would prefer to stick with powder. You can see here when I did go in with blush and bronzer afterwards, you can still see the highlight poking through. You can see the glow. I did not use it as a primer here, so it's just my natural primer and makeup foundation routine, but it was a very subtle glow. Now we are going to move into the last way that I chose to wear that. Don't mind my friend that is visiting us, but I am mixing the Auric into my foundation. I wanted to keep my foundation the same, so every time you see me using these products, I'm using the Fenty foundation. It is a little bit more liquidy. That's what I'm showing you there, that it does slide down my hand. I took a pump of the Fenty, a full pump, and a full pump of the Auric. You can see there, I really wanted to get a full pump. You can see them sliding together, and then I'm gonna take my finger and blend it in. It did give a more liquidy consistency, but you can see it's not liquidy enough to where it's like dripping like a serum. Then I just went on to apply that the way that I would typically apply foundation. And I think that this was probably my favorite way to apply the Auric Selenite was mixing it in with my foundation. I don't have any matte foundations. It was a little bit tricky for me as a dry skinned gal to find products that weren't already glowy, but I think for someone who has matte foundations and maybe is looking to give them a little bit more of a glowy look, this would be a good way to do that, mixing them in together. I think my preferred way to use the Auric Selenite would still be just with very light coverage, maybe concealer, tinted moisturizer, something like that. But this would be my second favorite way, is mixing it with my foundation and blending it into the skin that way. I do not feel like it changed the consistency of my foundation or anything like that. It just mixed in nicely, felt like my normal foundation on the skin, and it didn't cause any disruption. You can see me taking a teeny tiny bit. I wanted to try it again as a highlighter, except this time it's on top of blush and bronzer. Again, I did not have any issues getting it to melt into the skin. It didn't move my foundation. I felt like it applied fine over powder, and when I took a little bit less, I didn't have to work so hard to blend it in. When I had a little bit more, I had to take some time to actually blend it, but you can see there, it blended in nicely. The other side has nothing yet, so I just wanted to show you it's still very soft and subtle. Now we're getting into the eye look, and anytime I film any kind of eyeshadow tutorials or reviews, I do always like to mention that I prime my eyes and I do set it. So I'm using my Fenty eyeshadow primer and I am setting it just with that white chocolate shade in the Chocolate Bar Palette by Too Faced because that's what I typically do when I'm wearing an eyeshadow. So I wanted to apply it the way that I normally apply my eye makeup. I have long nails so I cannot apply the cream product with my finger. We'll talk more about that in the review. So I'm using my Refer number no. two brush. Now here, I did speed up the process, but I didn't edit out the amount of time that it took me to blend. It's not gonna seem that long since it was sped up, but it does take me some time to get the product onto my eye and to blend it out. I went in with this fluffier Wet n Wild brush afterward just to kind of help diffuse. I really like a blended look. I like it to be very soft, so I just took that and diffused the edges. Now we're getting into this glitter topper. It very much is a topper. It's not a super pigmented shade. I can use my finger with this one, and that, again, is my preferred method, to just dip my finger in, press it in, and here is the finished look. Okay. I feel like I have a lot to say and I probably <laughs> I probably should have written an outline for myself. This will be fun in editing, I'm sure, but let's start with let's start with the Glow Lest because I think that this is the product that people were most excited about. Now, Samantha Ravendahl did say that for her brand Auric, she wanted it to be a luxury brand and she wanted it to stand alone without having her name attached to that. If you're talking about a luxury brand, 
This is 100% luxury packaging. You have a glass bottle, you have the name Auric, I guess, what would you call it? It's not like engraved, but it, it's not a sticker, like it is on the bottle. On the back, however, you do have a sticker with the shade Selenite. Now, that doesn't matter to me. It really doesn't, and I'm sure the reason why they have stickers is because with these jars, I'm sure they could order them in bulk, but everything else on here is not a sticker. It is on the bottle itself. And then with the cap, you have this beautiful, like matte black cap packaging, and then you have the gold auric with the drip down the side. And I just think this packaging is A1. It definitely screams luxury to me. I think it's amazing. I know that Samantha mentioned in her video that she really worked hard on this pump and she wanted you to be able to pump out a little bit or pump out a lot, not use too much, not use too little, and I really feel like she nailed it on the pump. I know in every review that you've watched, the cap is a little bit hard to get off. That doesn't bother me. When it comes to packaging, I absolutely love the packaging on this product. Now, when we think about the product itself, I do not have the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter that everybody is comparing this to, but I'm sure you can find a million videos comparing the two products together. I don't have a product like this in my collection, but like I said, I have dry skin, so I spend a lot of time trying to hydrate my skin and make it look hydrated and glowy. And the reason why I'm telling you that is because when I thought of this product and when I saw it used on other people, I was like, wow, that just gives a beautiful, gorgeous glow. And that's what I was hoping for. But when I went to use this, I found that I really had to scale back on the products that I use every single day. For example, I am using the Glow Recipe Niacinamide Dew Drops. I had to not use that product because I feel like it gives me a healthy glow. When I was thinking about the foundation that I wanted to use when reviewing this product, I ultimately went with the Fenty Pro Filter Hydrating Longwear Foundation. The reason why I went with this foundation is because I feel like as a dry skin girl, you can take the name hydrating out of here. I really do have to use hydrating products underneath my skin when I'm using this foundation. So for me, it's not matte, but it doesn't give me a luminous finish and it can cause me to look a little bit dry. So that's why I went with this foundation. I couldn't use my Armani Luminous Silk because it gives me a little bit of a luminous finish. I didn't want to use my Too Faced Born This Way, which probably would have worked because the shade is too dark and I felt like that might hinder my opinion on my review. I didn't want to use my IT Cosmetics foundation because I feel like that gives me a little bit of a glow. So already when I was thinking about using this product, I had to dial back on some of the products that I'm using already. I did go in with my moisturizer and just a regular hydrating primer, but nothing that was glowy or illuminating. Now the thing that I do like about this product is when you're thinking of other illuminizers, even the one that I like by Cover FX, which I'm I'm not even sure if that's around anymore, but when you think of illuminating primers, illuminizing primers, I'm really having a hard time with that word. When you think of primers that are supposed to be illuminating, illuminizing, English is my first language and I can't nail this word down, illuminating primers. When you think of illuminating primers, you often think of glitter specks in them, and I am not a fan of glitter. This does not have any specks of glitter, which I truly appreciate. When this went on the skin, it did feel very hydrating. I did not wear this on its own. When I put it on my skin initially as like a primer, I was like, okay, I don't think I would necessarily want to wear this like just after my skin care routine because it did make me look a little glowy, no specks of glitter. I really enjoyed that. But in putting my foundation on top of it, in mixing it in with my foundation, in using it as an illuminating highlighter, I think this is a good product, but it just gives me a very subtle, glow. It doesn't do what I thought it was going to do. I don't know what I thought it was going to do. I guess maybe that's not the way to phrase it. This review is already turning out amazing. This product doesn't do anything extra that the other products that I was using before did. Like, 
I had a routine already in place that was giving me glowy, hydrating looking skin. So this didn't do anything that my other products weren't doing, if that makes sense. And then when, when I'm using this as a, a highlighter, which I am today, I don't have another highlighter on, it is a very subtle glow. I am someone who likes Natasha Denona highlighters. I like Ofra highlighters. I like a bam, in your face, glowing highlighter. This is not going to give it to you, so I'm not going to use this product as an illuminating highlighter. I would use this more so like as a primer or mixing it in with foundation. It does give me a nice, subtle, luminous glow. The highlighting effect is very subtle, so if you're someone who doesn't like the highlighters that are BAM, then you may really like using this as a highlighter because it's just very subtle very glowy, very skin looking. You know, it just looks very natural. So that is a plus. The way that I think I am going to use this product is I will probably use it on either no foundation days or on, and when I say no foundation days, I mean like still doing brows and an eye look and a little bit of concealer and like blush, you know, like as a no foundation routine, but where I'm still using concealer, or I would wear it like under a tinted moisturizer or a BB cream. I don't really feel like this does enough underneath a full blown foundation, like the Fenty Beauty Foundation. It just doesn't do anything extra in that sense. But I do think that this would be beautiful putting it all over the skin and then taking a little bit of concealer, doing a brow, maybe a little bit of bronzer and a lip gloss and that'll be a great way to wear it for me. If you are someone who has more normal skin, I don't wanna to speak to oily, because I really don't have any experience with oily skin, but if you're someone who has more of a normal skin tone, so you don't have a ton of products already in your collection that make you look glowy, then this may be an amazing product for you. For me, it just didn't do anything to wow me. And I think that perhaps that's because I watched a ton of videos already with people wearing it and saying, wow, this transformed my makeup. This is the best thing ever and I'm gonna wear it every single day. I think this is a good product. I like it. I don't regret purchasing it. I can't remember the price point. For some reason I wanna say $39 or $45. Maybe it's 45. I think that it is worth it for what you're getting. Luxury packaging. I am absolutely obsessed with the packaging. I would personally say that I like the packaging more than the product. Now, do I think it's a bad product? No, I think it's a great product. Do I regret purchasing it? No, but I just don't think that it's something that I'm going to reach for every day because of the nature of my skin and the fact that I already spend so much time trying to get a dewy, hydrating look. I don't think that this does anything extra for me in that area. I also am not going to choose to wear it as a highlighter because it doesn't give me enough oomph, enough bam. It's much more subtle. And I do almost wish that I got the shade Morganite because I wonder if Morganite being a little bit cooler and being a little bit lighter, I wonder if that would have given me a more reflective glow. So those are my thoughts on the glow list. Now let's talk about this guy. Let's talk about the smoke and reflect. So I wanna start by telling you that when I purchased this product, in my mind, I was hoping for it to be like a one and done. I was hoping for a very quick application of the cream product, being able to put it on super quick and easy before work, and then topping it with the topper, the eyeshadow, and just having a very quick, easy, everyday go-to look. That was my goal for this. I don't have products like this in my collection. I don't typically reach for something that has more of a glitter topper feel, and I don't use a ton of cream products. But I thought, this looks really nice. I love the packaging. Again, it's glass packaging. It screws on very tightly, so I don't think you're gonna have issues with this drying out. And I like that you get a little mirror in here. I think the packaging, again, is A1. Absolutely love it but I don't have a product like this in my collection and I was hoping for a quick and easy one and done. When it comes to the cream product, it is very moussey. It is not hard. Other cream products that I've used in the past have been a little bit harder, I guess, when you touch them or maybe like they need the warmth of your finger to warm up. This is very moussey and it almost has like a little bit of a bounce to it. I think that this is best applied with your finger. 
So someone like me who has really long nails and can't really get your finger in there or blend easily on your finger, it's a little bit trickier for us because I think that this applies best with your finger. Blends out amazingly and you have time to work with it. It's not going to dry down quickly for you. So I think if you take your finger, pat it in, you can even use your blink finger to blend it out in the crease. It, it blends in the crease amazingly. It definitely is not something that you have to work with when it comes to blending. However, I do find that since I have to use a brush, my rougher number two brush has been the brush that has worked out the best for me. I can pat. I don't swipe. When you swipe, you don't really get product. So if you're using a brush, I like to pat it and then press it into the onto the eye and then I'll go in with just a random wet and wild brush that I've been using and blend it out in the crease. That's how I've been applying it. It's not as quick and easy as I thought it was going to be or as I was hoping it was going to be. I do have to play with it a little bit. I do have to build it up a little bit and I have to really take the time to blend it out, but the product allows me to do that. Then when we talk about the eyeshadow, the eyeshadow for me feels more like a glitter topper than an eyeshadow. It's hard to tell when looking at it. When looking at it, you almost think, oh, it's just going to be a very pretty shimmering eye. But when you touch it, it feels gritty and it feels like hard paint pan and swatched on your finger, it does look pretty sheer. So when you press it onto the lids, you get this glittery effect. If you know me, you know that I don't like glitter. So I was very nervous when I first dipped my finger into this. I was scared, but let me tell you, zero fallout. None. Not any single fallout. Not during the day, not after I exercised with my husband and didn't wash my face beforehand, no fallout. So if I'm going to wear a glitter, it will be this. And I do just apply it with my finger and pat it on. This for an eyeshadow topper is beautiful and works amazingly. Another thing to note about these two products is I didn't have any creasing. I really didn't. I applied my makeup for work at five o'clock. That's, I mean, that's like when I always apply at 5, 5.30. So one day, I was applying my makeup, 5, 5.30. By the end of the day, 3.30, the end of dismissal, because I am a teacher, I ran into Smags, and she said to me, oh, what is on your eyes? And so I told her it's the new Auric product, and she was like, okay, close your eyes and let me look at it. And she goes, Kelly, you have no creasing. You have no creasing whatsoever. So I do think that this is a great product. I think that it's great quality. I think that the texture of the cream is beautiful. It gives you time to work with it. The glitter topper creates a nice touch. I don't have anything like this in my collection, but at this time, I'm not planning on purchasing more because it takes me some time to work with this. It's not as quick and easy as I was hoping it was going to be. I can't just pat it on and then go out the door. I really have to manipulate it, I have to blend it, I have to use a brush, I have to get it how I want it. So it takes a little bit longer in the morning and I don't think that this is something that I will reach for on the daily like I was hoping to. So I just wanna wrap up my thoughts here. I wanna give you like my last little piece of the pie because I feel like <laughs> I don't know if what I'm saying even makes sense at all. So I just, I want to put a little bow on it. I want to put a bow on this review. In thinking of these products, I'm glad that I have them. I do think they are high quality products. Oh, this is upside down. I am absolutely in love with the packaging. It looks so luxurious. You have 39, I forgot to touch on this, $39 for this product. I think that's a fair price because you are getting two products in one. And then I think it's $45 for the Glow Lust. I think the pricing is fair. The packaging is absolutely amazing. It's made in Italy. In my experience, the products that I have tried that are made in Italy are very high quality. I think the products themselves are good. I just don't find that I'm as excited as maybe some other people are. Am I gonna use the Glow Lust? Yes. Would I recommend it? Sure, I would. If you are someone who doesn't have a product like this, or like I said, if you have more normal skin and you're just looking for something that's very subtle, a very subtle 
healthy looking addition to your skincare or makeup routine, then I think that this would be great for you. If you're someone like me who maybe already spends so much time trying to make your makeup look luminous and you're thinking, oh, I want to use this as a highlighter, then I don't know that this would be your favorite product because I don't really enjoy it as a highlighter because it is so subtle. Does it give me a glow? Yes. Does it look beautiful and skin-like? Yes. I love that it doesn't have glitter in it. I'm just thinking maybe if I got Morganite, it would be a little bit more blingy because that's what I prefer. And then when it comes down to this bad boy, the Smoke and Reflect, I'm not purchasing more at this time, but I don't regret it and it's not something that I would try to return. I just have to work with it a little bit more than I was hoping. And my overall look when using these products is a little bit more subtle than I was expecting. I was watching reviews and hearing people say, oh my gosh, it's amazing, it's bam, it's blingy, it's boom. And maybe for them it is, it just didn't turn out to be that way for me. It's very subtle, a lot lighter than I was expecting, and very just toned down. So hopefully that's helpful. I know that there were people who are, were waiting on more in-depth reviews, so I really wanted to get my thoughts together. I do like these, these products, but I really think that if you are going to purchase them, you need to think about if they will fit into your skincare routine and into what you want them to do. I don't regret them. I'm looking forward to seeing what Samantha Ravindahl comes out with. I was hoping that this was like illuminating foundation when it first came out, and it's not, but I think that she probably will come out with a foundation, and if and when she does, I think that this product will be a great pairing with that foundation. So although I wasn't as excited as some other people, I do like these products. They're just a little bit different than I was expecting them to be. So hopefully that was helpful. That's gonna do it for this video. If you did enjoy it, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you tried out any of these products, let us know in the comments below what you thought about them so that people who are watching this video can scroll through and hear from you as well. I would love to have you subscribe, become part of the K Bella fam. That way I can see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye.